Hi, so what I want to do in the next few videos is to give you an overview of the data models of a few of the more popular digital library applications, Omeka, DSpace, ContentDM, Fedora, etc. But before we get to that, I thought it would be useful to talk briefly about what exactly I mean by a data model. So what is a data model? Uh, well, not to be completely ridiculous about it, but it's a model of the data. Um, a model of the data that the application or database or what have you understands and can interpret and manipulate. Let me say that again. A data model is a model of the data that is interpretable by an application. There are a huge number of different types of data out there in the world. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of MIME types, and MIME types are recognized file formats. Any given application is only going to be able to manipulate certain types of file formats. For example, a photo editor is not going to be able to handle audio files. YouTube doesn't handle word processor documents, right? The universe of types of data that an application understands is limited, and the data model is what dictates what that application can do with the types of data that it does understand. So here's a diagram of how a data model comes into existence. This figure is taken from a textbook on database design that one of my colleagues uses in her systems analysis course. The citation is on the bottom right. What this figure is saying is the first thing that needs to happen is that someone has to collect information from users and potential users about what they're going to require this database to do, requirements, collection, and analysis. Right? The user community or communities, plural, has to be identified. Is this database going to be used by students, by accountants, by software developers, by the general public, etc.? Right? Then, what does that user community or communities need out of that database? Students need different types of data than accountants and vice versa. And what are the use cases? for this database. Citation searching, searching for tax information, logging bugs in software, what? Right? And then out of that requirements analysis come the functional specifications and the data model for the database. And both of those get developed more or less in parallel. The specifications document functional analysis on the left-hand side of this figure. Um, the specifications document outlines the functionality of the database. Right? It should allow entry of time and date and the conditions under which a bug was found, for example, if we're talking about a bug tracking database. If we're talking about a citation searching database, it should enable searching by title, author, subject, publication year, etc. Simultaneously, the right-hand side of this, uh, this figure, the data model is being designed. If we want to be able to search by title, author, subject, etc., the entities in the database, the records, need to be of a type where those characteristics make sense. And those fields need to be present in each record in the database. So functional specifications and the data model inform each other. So once the universe of data types is established for an application, then it needs to be mapped out what the application or database or what have you can do with objects of those databases. What can a photo editor do with an image file, for example? The application can rotate the image through some number of degrees. It can flip the image, mirror image, 
reverse it, it can change the dimensions to convert the image to a thumbnail, etc. Right? The general type of data is image file. The specific file types are JPEG, GIF, TIFF, etc. And the manipulations that can be performed on any of those specific types of image file are rotate, scale, etc. Now, Here's another figure from that same textbook, only this figure is what's called an Entity Relationship Diagram, an ER diagram for a database. Right? What are the types of objects that are represented in this ER diagram for this database? Look at the rectangles, employee, department, project, etc. So let's look at employee. What are the characteristics of Employee. Employees have names. A name has a first name, middle initial, and last name. Employees have an address, a salary, etc. Employees have a supervisor and or a supervisee, someone the employee supervises. Right? That relationship is of type supervision. Employees work for or manage a department. Departments have a name and a location. Departments control projects, etc. You get the idea. The types of entities that exist in the universe of this database are mapped out, as are the characteristics of those entities and the relationships between entities. Those characteristics and relationships dictate what can be done with those entities. Data can be added and changed. For example, an employee's name isn't likely to change, but their department might. Right? So those fields in this database can be, new data can be added or manipulated. The projects a department controls will change over time, etc. So, I want to make it clear that this was a ridiculously brief and wildly oversimplified overview of data models. Uh, this is just a few minutes on a topic that really deserves hours and probably an entire course. Um, speaking of entire courses, if you really want to learn more about data models, you should take a course on systems analysis, on database design, on software architecture. All of those courses are going to get into far greater depth. This was just by way of broad brushstroke overview of data models so that the next couple of videos will make sense where I talk about the data models that lie behind the architecture of different digital library applications.